Happy New Year! It's been long since I last posted this series, but finally I'm back. Hi everyone, this is Chihiro and you're watching Africana at AfricaCenter.com. This year I'll be posting this series every month, so be sure to check it out. Today we'll be learning about the Belle House paintings. So the Belle House painting is the house painting painted by the Belle people. So now let's look into who the Belle people are. So the Belle people are farmers who grow plants like maize, millet, and beans. And they are one of the Mguni people. And the Mguni people are can be divided into four groups, four distinct groups. Actually, the Mguni people make two-thirds of the black population in South Africa. The first group among the Mguni people is the Central Mguni, and the second is the Southern Mguni, and the third one is Swazi and Ndebele people. So among the Ndebele people, they can be divided into Southern Ndebele people and Northern Ndebele people. So the people who are famous for the house paintings is the Southern Ndebele people. The Southern Ndebele people, they live in the province like Mpumalanga, uh, Gauten, and Limpopo. Ndebele art is a big part of Ndebele culture, especially the beeswork. Ndebele women often wear a variety of ornaments, and each ornament represents a uh, social status of the woman. You would realize the women are wearing a lot of rings around their necks, around their arms, even around the, their legs. These rings symbolize her bond and her faithfulness to her husband. The richer your husband is, the more rings you get. These are called, the rings are called idzila, and other than the rings, uh, there are ornaments like isigolwani, which is a neck hoop that's made of glass, and ijogolo, five-fingered apron, nguba, marriage blanket, and amakubi, beaded headdresses. Those are worn by a married woman. If you are a newly married wife, you have to be good at painting because your husband's family will judge you based on the house painting. If, the, if your line is crooked, your husband's family will think you are uneducated. They will think the mother of this girl didn't teach her how to paint properly. As mentioned, the painting method and painting style is passed down from the mothers to daughters. It's part of the childhood education for the Ndebele people. Even if you can read English, if you cannot paint well, that means you are uneducated. So the painting is characterized by colorful and geometric patterns outlined by black lines. Surprisingly, the artists don't use the rulers or any measure to draw a straight line. They will draw, they, they will design in the head, but when it comes to painting, there's no draft, you just draw and that will become your artwork. And some painters, they don't even use paint brushes. They use chicken feathers instead. When the Mdebele house painting first started, there was no paint. So they use natural dye like ochre, charcoal, limestone. They'll mix those pigments with cow dung so that it's easier to paint on the house walls. And it's not like they'll paint the house anytime during the year. They'll paint only during the dry season, which is from March to October. And when the rain season comes, what would happen? The rain will wash away the natural dyes. So you need to start afresh in the next dry season. But of course, after 1940s, when South Africa started importing the acrylic paint, they started using some vivid colors like red, pink, yellow, and so on. At some point, they used laundry detergent to get the color blue, which I think is really creative. Apart from its aesthetic appeal, it has a cultural significance as well. In 1883, the Mdebele people had a war with the Boers. Uh, the Boers are a group of people who are descendants of Dutch-speaking white settlers in South Africa. 
For eight months, the Ndevele people held out against the onslaught. But in the end, the Ndevele people lost the war and the, the Boers destroyed the social structure of the Ndebele people and they seized the ancestral land of the Ndebele people. And then not only that, but the Ndebele families, they were isolated from one another and forced to work as indentured labor. But this didn't stop Ndebele women from sustaining their cultural identity. They painted their walls with Ndebele patterns to show that the Mdebele people are there. Among the Mdebele people, it worked as a secret code. They communicated the war strategy, they announced the marriage through the walls, and also they put the personal prayers there. The Boer farmers didn't see it as a threat, as they thought it's a cultural art. I feel like women play an important role when it comes to sustaining their culture through art especially during or after a crisis. I heard a similar story when I was researching on Imigongo art from Rwanda. It was Rwandese woman who revived the Imigongo art after the genocide. The most well-known Mdebele artist is Esther Malangu. Malangu first gained international attention after the exhibition in Paris called Magicians de la Terre. Magicien de la Terre. The Magicians of the Earth. This exhibition was the first international exhibition that counteracted the Eurocentric practices within the contemporary art. It sought to correct the problem of a 100% exhibition ignoring 80% of the world. I mean, it was okay as their first try. But still, they featured 50% Western artists and 50% no Western artists. If you want to call it the magicians of the earth, why not go all the way to 0% Western artists and 100% no Western artists? Just to compensate a little bit. But anyway, it did some good as this exhibition opened many doors to the Ndebele paintings and Esther Malangu. She painted on Coke bottle and took photo with John Legend. She painted on British Airways airplane, BMW, tea bags, and many more. And the world's eye was on the ballet art. I understand that the International Art Festival, uh, International Art Exhibition is a great thing. And for some artists, it's a, it's a goal, right? But it shouldn't apply to all the artists. I still think Malanga's artwork, Malanga's painting, would look better in Pumalanga, which is her own village. It's because I feel like if you put the Mdebele art on BMW or on Coke bottle, of course it looks beautiful, but I feel like something is missing. Maybe people will be impressed when they see the patterns, they'll think, oh, it's beautiful. But how many people would know that it's a marriage tradition? has been there for a long really long time and it's passed down to mother to daughter um if you miss those contexts i think you miss uh, a big part of it especially when you look at african art i think each country or each region or each ethnic group has their own way to celebrate the artwork or the art so it's it's a bit misleading to think things that are exhibited beautifully at the museum is the best artwork. So, let me know what you like about the ballet art and how you find this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.